things. And uh, so actually we are going to talk about this today. It's the book and its author, Eric. But uh, before we get into this and the stories, it's a species of uh, endemic flora and fauna, starting from uh, the smallest cat, the wild cat in the world, to the biggest living thing on earth. If you take, uh, one can drive through, through uh, different uh, geographical zones within a couple of hours, may say three to four hours of time, um, if you take that. So that is one reason why I want to tell you, Eric Joseph works as a solution architect at MAS, old boy of uh, Wesley College, Diploma Homa uh, holder uh, from Hagoda School of Photography. And uh, remember when you uh, came up with this idea before the book was even, you know, uh, you know, it was you know, on the cards, like we were discussing about it. You said that if you are to do a book, but uh, it would be interesting uh, for the viewers to know like how uh, this came up and can you give us like a brief uh, introduction uh, to the book? Sure. Uh, so I started at the P and Solution Architect, but this I do as a hobby, but I should do something with the pictures I take. And then I came across the idea I need to have an exhibition and a book. So from 2015 onwards, I slowly, slowly started collecting pictures from the Central Highlands all the way to the sea. And uh, that's a kind of a flow to the book rather than, you know, having random images just to have a flow like a river flow. So that's the idea behind of this. I pretty much like the place a lot. Can you start yeah. uh, with the Highlands? Uh, so Sure, sure. As the book, uh, so I'll start with the, one of the, my favorite pictures from Horton Plains. Inside the forest, how you see it, but when you're driving the road, you will not see this view, but this is a typical mountain forest in Horton Plains. But, Many people go to Horton Plains just to see Bakers and uh, Wells in, but they are. So if I move to the next one. Okay, this is, uh, this is at uh, Adams Creek viewpoint, the fifth highest mountain in Sri Lanka, but also in that place, same place you can see other uh, Totupalakanda and the other two highest mountain peaks in Radvi, Sri Lanka. So that... Radvi. Right. So, yeah, go ahead. And uh, then this slight delay on the loading of this is again a sunset in Horton Plains. The previous picture was sunrise, and this is a sunset in Horton Plains. Here you can see some above. And this is another one of my favorite images because of the rim light of the bird. And this early morning in Horton. When I come to this picture, this is, you can see the beautiful yellow color flowers, all that, but this is actually an invasive species to Horton. So now I think most of the ulex has been removed, but uh, the negative side of it, uh, this used to be a kind of home or a protected uh, protection for the black clip lizard, but sadly, after removing the ulex, we don't see black lip pivots much common here. So, next one is again in the morning, another kind of common bird in Horton Plain, but a bit difficult to photograph because when you're even going in the vehicle or they shy away and fly away the entire flock. So, but this is close to the car park, I believe I took this. Again, another common bird in Horton Plains, but uh, this was actually at the Mahalia bungalow. So we were at the, having breakfast and we, one of my friends spotted them coming and taking mud to build the nest. So then I, we slowly approached and waited till the birds come back and got this. So it's again, another common bird, but a very difficult bird to photograph. So this is again another landscape uh, picture in Horton. 
in the morning, but uh, I don't know whether you believed on it. This photograph actually was taken from my 500 prime lens, not a wide lens. So in hot, you get uh, the weather changes, you know, every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you have sunra a beautiful sunrise. And then the next minute it can be, uh, you know, cloudy, clouds coming and rain and all that. So okay. that's why I love hot lens. Every moment, every lighting change, this is a landscape, wind, all that. So this is a... This is one of my favorite, favorite pictures in Horton. Uh, uh, you... Sorry to interrupt, uh, Eric, like, uh, okay, it's, it's nice. Uh, you have seen this in the book as well and the story behind it. I mean, it looked pretty relaxed, uh, the animal. So, so if you can get some insights uh, to the photographers or the wildlife enthusiasts who are listening, like how you can, um, get the animal to relax yeah. and what you did there and uh, the oh, 15 of us on three or four acres so when we reach arangapur the first jeep by the samita was there and they, he said park it and because they are water so we waited till it's kind of settled down four o'clock till about six o'clock it was playing and the next day morning when we went to arangapur again it was there i think this is if i'm not mistaken this was the second day morning i was sitting there on the roadside it came about 10 meters close to me and I was look, this is the actually a copy of image of the book. So left hand side, you can see the previous image and on your right hand see uh, other few image, how the otter was relaxed and looking at us. So if you don't move and disturb the animal, if the animal is come again, what I say is you need to know the animal behavior also to photograph a bird or anything. So you can predict the animal's movement, then it's easy to capture a good image. This is one of my one of my uh, favorite and most popular pictures. And uh, yeah, I was going to ask uh, about this as well. Uh, I remember that uh, I mean I have been to Horton Plains. People who have taken uh, shots of leopards in Horton Plains, and uh, very little known about about them as well. So um, you were like planning to get this shot and. Uh, how was it, what went behind this like uh, like and unfortunately we want to achieve this when this we encountered the leopard one of our friends has to come back so only it was two of us or three of us in the, my vehicle so first day morning when we reached Mahalia passing the dome the leopards are in hot plains but no luck throughout the night we had alarm calls so next day morning also we spent entire morning there we didn't have any luck so in the evening, we decided to go to a Zohia side. And then I think Lasanta was saying, let's go and take some landscape at, uh, when you are clicking for the camera noise, it stopped and looking at us. So, but this encounter we had about for a one hour. So this was, after that, I was very lucky. I mean, I had about 15 encounters after that, almost every trip in Horton. It's then easy to find leopards. And this is the, yeah, so this is the story I have written about that encounter. From Horton Plains, Victoria Park is also another place where we go to photograph birds. This is endemic in Victoria Park. So, and then another picture from the Victoria, next one, uh, by it's Splash. A, Again. Actually, uh, in Victoria Park, right? Yeah, I've been Victoria. there quite a few times and I've seen the bird. I think this is the only encounter I had if I'm not mistaken, going there over many years. So this is the cover page of my book and direction and calling out the bird is coming on victory section. So I think this is the team, I think we are all of us who were at uh, Ella Rock on that day. So then we move towards the central from the highlands to the central highland towards knuckles. He said, I, actually I was photographing the leaf nose. Then one of my friends was saying there's something moving in between your legs. So it was, then I only noticed the wiper, hub nose wiper there. 
and uh, from there in uh, singaraj i believe uh, you prefer horton plains than singaraj because of the leeches <laughs> yes <laughs> no leeches in horton <laughs> and you get more, almost all the birds it rarely come down it's generally on perch high in the tree so it's very rarely come down i mean during that fruit season of the fruit they will come fruiting down fruiting season so, yeah yeah and then uh, caruson we said this was actually uh, some of the back uh, on the board uh, for the book because that gives the colors and everything of that animal and it's a uh, rain most of it i have used for rain forest the rain forest is dark and that's why from um, many uh, black background uh, books in sri lanka if i am not mistaken so i was actually going to ask you but uh, yeah thanks for the explanation so <laughs> Few more from Singaraj. Uh, uh, Five Bars Hotel is very easy to frog mouth. This was actually out outside the forest. Uh, we were on the village. We were walking. So outside, this was we photographed it, not inside the forest. I think this one is the most common bird in Sri Lanka. Uh, the bird was very low picture. No one. <laughs> I, I remember, remember this remember photograph. This, this. <laughs> I think back in uh, 2014, and yeah. it was uh, we were we did a date. So a rare encounter in Udavale for a leopard. So now we go to the North Central Province or the driver. So, and if you see this, the little one is trying to run away from the the herd. You know, when he comes to the water and play around, because they are very playful. So, again, so some more of uh, that, yeah, uh, encounter that we had. Yeah. So this was another encounter, I believe. <laughs> This tusker is no longer there because we haven't seen the tusker from 2019, I believe. So I don't know if there's any record. <clears throat> yeah. So another color, however, I think this tusker was killed by poaching. I think last year, sadly. So color, however, outside the parks, if you're careful, uh, you can get those beautiful pictures in the reservoirs. In the drive and so on. Another picture of, I think, from okay, uh, yeah, the famous Galgamo cross tusker. Uh, this, I think, I photographed somewhere in 2013 and had a very close encounter. We were able to go about. Able to get close to this. Now, if the screen is loading, yeah. So I believe this is the biggest task or the tallest task in Sri Lanka right now. It took me about uh, yeah. And you were just landing uh, from your work, I believe, and the, like you informed me like few hours before. <laughs> so I think I call I call you from Doha. <laughs> On the way yes. back to Sri Lanka and said, let's go next yeah. day. Yeah. So since you said that it's one of the toughest taskers to find, so I didn't have... Uh, on the bottom of the picture, this is a story I wrote the three years search, as I mentioned earlier, to photograph this task. I went to Gargamo multiple times and each encounter was different. So we go there, it's... Mandara calls me and said, okay, the task is yeah. one of my <laughs> favorites place to photograph. And this is an encounter we had, uh, I think only us and another Jeep was there entire evening. Back in the day we were, when Milpath was not that popular. The 
in velpattu i haven't come across much pictures of a jungle cat in the day time so <laughs> one lucky encounter while i was waiting for the cubs leopard cubs suddenly this came across and crossed the road on top of the bus so back to yala one of few pictures of yala and one of the few pictures i have of this tasker so this was actually at parmangal while we were having lunch now and remember you are the client and this strike me a lot it's uh, one of the nicer images i have seen in that particular uh, area so nice one this is actually uh about half an hour one hour drive from my home in malabi in colombo so this is actually in 2015 election where everybody was on ra- radio or tv lighting the lines all that and one of my favorites pictures of this bird heart of colombo i say would say capital of uh, so i have few places photographed this is i think i was the only, one of the luckiest people to photograph to see a friend at a hospital and then i went there to near the army restaurant to have lunch then i see something on white and i was so i saw one or two comb ducks and then i had a few people who came there and then they took off from and landed on the on the other side when we went there there were all together 20 25 comb ducks all together in colombo so that is one of the rare encounters of comb as a nature lover and also a photographer like there yeah, there are wildlife around so it's just that finding them so it's a good message as well so this is the story have written in my book area of your images as well <laughs> so i think i didn't know much about birds because i i am very not good at uh, identifying shell ducks in sri lanka they are not a regular visitor and uh, i have actually before this trip i photographed some of them but the strip actually i went to photograph bahirat goose uh, regular visitor sri lanka during the migrate season and i was lucky to you know photograph the take off of uh, gagane and next next and also this is in mana actually some time back on this is some in jaffna i think that year we had uh, lots of birds from 2017 that lot of birds in jaffna that year we didn't have much in mana you use hides and if you oh man if they see they apply so this is flamingos in wankale uh, bird sanctuary it's not easy my one so this is i think one of the pictures after taking the pictures of flamingos i'm returning one of my friends to okay it's not yeah, easy to course. yes <laughs> all the mud sometimes you have to go there with the bean bag keeping your camera so it's not easy sometimes in mana lots of effort yeah yeah the front end took some branches put it surround us while we are in the hide it came and landed so and we didn't move so i think that's the advantage of putting a hide but uh, i have seen some and get beautiful pictures with a great depth of field and then uh, again in mana so these few pictures are taken somewhere in tesa alley in that area so i mean when you go there you can see fishermen pulling out this huge Uh, what you call him signal is mother so when you are pulling these out birds comes especially with gulls and turns come and fish and catch the small uh, so if you know that the time of their pulling the fishing nets if you go there i think you can get some good actions and small story behind this so we went there and the five of us there and they 
one of my friends are approaching from the right hand side and i i couldn't walk there because they were close to the bird so i i said okay about 50 meters and then see so this was taken from a generally take only my 500 prime lens yes uh, this is uh, malathi uh, eric the crab shots uh, what lens did you use for that i believe it was from the 500 prime because you can't get much closer to you can't use a wide angle or anything and get closer you need to keep the distance so i believe if i'm not mistaken that's from the 500 prime lens i is a roll there also i mean if you have 500 or 600 lens and then sometimes you need to anticipate if you in a branch or something or anticipate if the bird is going to fly then it would be easy but put him proud so with the new cameras it's coming in it's not hard as it used to be but what you need to know is you have to anticipate the bird's movements i see all right um, and uh, another small thing like what inspires your photography like it's amazing and i see a lot of life in there colors nature at it is like like what inspires your photography like so i actually i mean i follow a lot of photographers <laughs> so i have got uh, when my hard computer crashed i oh, lost I some of my best pictures so now always i backed up into hard drivers all oh, right great thank you eric that's great thank you um ranjan asks um where he is open sometimes it's during especially in the breeding season it you can hear the aranga call so then you have to most of the time you have to stay still and wait it till it comes out so rather than going close and looking at it so this that to getting close to the bird if you stay give some space and uh, don't move then it will come out sureni as uh, what is your favorite out of all and uh, then the leopards of horton plains Uh, if any other questions, uh, anybody? I mean, and there's someone that uh, to the next generation, so he's asking a question. <laughs> oh, that's a long one. I, my advice would be, I could say study the animals also, not only the photographic technique, all that. Mm -hmm. I knew the samba lamb cause, and then was uh, you know searching for samba until it came out. I think that's a question. Yeah, uh, um, she's like I... it's everyone, right? I mean, it's uh, so it's not on. As I mentioned, uh, this is I what I put on. This is one of the quotes from the book I have put. So it's everybody's responsibility, not only the authorities or anybody. It's everybody's responsibility. And teach them all these skills and how to really love nature and appreciate. 
I actually, sure, I, I mean, yes, yeah, you are doing yeah, that this already. This would be a start, huh? I guess. Uh, this would be a start, so maybe in the a dream related to photography. So, one of my dream was this book, and uh, now I think I need. I think I achieve my object because creating something unique. Uh, I would say Scandinavian countries, all that with the winter, all the winter birds, polar bears. Maybe hopefully one day to Antarctica also photograph the living uh, penguins. Um, one more. And Eric, for the wonderful session. I, was anyone asking? No. All right. So thanks again. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, Eric, thank you very much. So we we'll hope to see more work of you in